everybody, welcome back to Country Girl. My name is Kathy Jarvis, and today we're inside the kitchen again because I got something I want to talk about, and that is the compost pile. Now, if you've been around any gardeners or if you're just starting, you know how important everyone's always talking about how important the compost piles are. And if you've been a gardener for a while, you know how important they are. And when you work with compost piles, there's all different kinds of ways you can do this. There's no one set way. You can just pile everything up in a pile. You can make a cement block container. You can make a water container. You can make a container out of pallets. Or you can actually go and buy a plastic tumbler one. It doesn't matter how you do it. It just do it. And you read all these recipes that, oh, you have to put so much brown stuff and so much green stuff. You can just go and put whatever you want in it. You might have a cold pal, not a hot pal. And the difference there would be that the cold pal will take longer. It will not kill your weed seeds, so you don't want to put any weeds in it. But the hot pal is where you layer the, the brown and the green and the brown and the green and turn it every two weeks to a month and keep it irrigated and keep it moist but not soaked. You do a lot of work with those type of pals when they're great if you can do them. But my problem is not the compost pal. My problem comes when we're in the house. I have tried so many ways because you don't want to run out to the compost pile every meal, you know, to take and put scraps. You want to keep them in the house until you have enough to go out. Make one trip a day, one trip a week, depending on how much you have. Well, there's the problem. Right now, with a harvest coming in, the last of the harvest, of the summer harvest coming in, there's a lot of fruit that starting, our crops are starting to um, go bad. And I can put the tomatoes on the counter to let them ripe because they're a little green yet and you're, you know, you want to get them out. You have a problem of some of them rotting. And when that happens, you end up with these little fruit flies and gnats that go everywhere. And I really had a problem this past week with those things. And in fact, this, I don't know if you can see them, but they're in there. That's just two days worth. And I've got three of these sitting around. Now these are nothing more than apple cider vinegar with a little bit of soap, dishwash soap dropped in. And that's all I used to catch them. And I don't have any bugs right now. I went through the house and I got rid of all the ones that were rotting and I processed everything that we could process and we ate the rest. So there's no fruit around here except for a couple of butternut squash and some onions and some garlic. But we still end up with the problem of having this compost that we have to take out to the bin. And we want, especially in the warm time, you don't want to run out there in the cold all the time. You want to keep it in the house as long as possible. And we've tried many different methods. We've tried plastic, with the lids and this is what happens after a while. You cannot clean it. It gets mildew and junk in it and you can scrub and scrub and scrub but that stuff has gone into the plastic. There's no getting it out. And it smells. You can put baking soda, you can put anything on it and it's going to smell. And bugs get in it, even if you have a lid on it, bugs seem to get into those plastic ones. So I went and I bought a metal container one. This is my new solution to my compost problem. It is a metal pill. It's not going to, if it mildews, it'll wash out. It has a filter on the top, charcoal filter, that you can take out and clean. And it's, they give you an extra one, so you have two of them. And you can clean these and reuse them. 
I put a plastic bag in this one just to make it easier to pull out and take out to the compost pile, but you don't have to. Yeah. And the lid fits tightly on here, so no bugs are going to get into it. And it actually looks nice that I can set it right by the preparation area of the sink. That doesn't look bad. So I'm hoping situation. I'm hoping that this will take care of the bug problem. It definitely will take care of the smell problem because of the charcoal uh, filter on it. And I still plan on taking the compost out every night, every other night, depending on if I cook or not, we, or if we went, go out, or if I have to process any vegetables. But I think it's going to work. In the winter time, which is when we're always a little bit lazy about going out and we don't have as much compost piling in because you don't have all the vegetables coming in that you have to take care of them, usually in the freezer or in the pantry, and you just open the jar or unthaw the and use it, and you don't have any of the waste like you do in the summertime when you're processing it. So it's a little bit longer in the winter time before you get out to compost bins. So I'm really hoping that this works. I think it will. So far it's worked nicely. And if you're having problems with the fruit, fruit flies and gnats, try the vinegar with a little bit of uh, deep uh, dishwasher soap on it and set them around. Make sure that you clean all the areas where the fruit, or the fruit or the vegetables have gone bad because that sticky stuff, you can't see it. And sometimes it's not even sticky, but the bugs find it. So make sure you wash that area down really nice and um, hopefully that'll help take care of your fruit fly problems if you have one. And until next time, uh, remember dream big, follow that dream. Subscribe to the channel if you would, it doesn't cost anything. If you really want to help me out, share it with your friends so they can help get rid of their fruit fly problems also. So. God bless and see you later. Bye.